everybody and welcome. Welcome to another Insight Show here on MadhouseTV.com. Uh, it's Thursday night. It's 12-18. Uh, coming over to another year. My goodness. It'll be two years coming up in June for us, so that's, that's pretty cool. I want to thank everybody for hanging in there and watching the show. Uh, a lot of, I get a lot of emails and stuff saying you guys watch it after it's done too, so... Uh, now, after, we don't care. Just watch the show. And we love your comments, so please send them in. Uh, I want wish everybody a happy Hanukkah tonight. And uh, also a Merry Christmas and uh, Kwanzaa and everything else that's in there. <laughs> you know the theme of our show? Uh, it's from the old George Burns movie, uh, from uh, Oh God, which is Think God. And uh, that's the theme of our show. And uh, I just think it's appropriate now just to say that because it is Christmas. And uh, I hope everybody is going to have a nice, healthy one. And uh, call, your, call your kids, call your family, say hello. <laughs> I thought it was on another show where we're going to have the uh, things coming out. But I'm going to do a little song since it is the Christmas time and uh, Hanukkah time. So with that, I'm going to give my uh, cue to my band in the background. And I think I'm just going to sit here and sing it and wing it. We have a great uh, show for you tonight. We have a Bob Nel Mr. Bob Nelson on the, on the show. And Jane Nee uh, is going to be talking with uh, about, uh, well, she's also a comedian. And she also uh, has a charity event uh, that we're going to be talking about. So as soon as we get that in there. Yeah, there we go. Well, you know what? <laughs> I thought I turned it on. So how much did we get? Anything at all? Okay. So with that, I'm just going to sit here and relax, wait for my band to start, and uh, welcome to the show. Kids from one 
So this is live TV. You never know quite what's going to happen, but it happens, and it's wonderful. You got my, you have my mic on, right? <laughs> okay. No, no, this mic. There we go. Uh, so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, sitting right next to me is a man who's been on a lot of stuff. Very funny man who's been cracking us up for a long time. Uh, you're going to see a clip of him later as well. So, uh, Bob? No. Dennis, Bob how's it going? This is <laughs> it's great now. <laughs> Everything all is just all smooth. I want to do this now, too. Well, you can. <laughs> I want to do it. I, have, I, want to, I just, what, the whole thing you did there, I loved it. <laughs> well, you it's, know it's live. Watch. You know. You're now a co-host. There <laughs> yeah. you go. Simple it's, enough. It was, it's fun, you know. It's like you never know what's going to happen. No, you don't. Does and the panic go through your head at all? Like when you think these people watching right now are like looking at me going, that guy just totally messed up. I love this show. Yeah, but you know what? That's why they love this show. I know. Show. That's why I would want to do it. It's Because I totally mess up all the time. It, 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 it I would be like a star of the mess ups. No, I think I got your beat there. From <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, no, this is, it's actually a great show. And uh, it's just a ton of people and a ton of fun and, and and the cameraman who owns the place, Tommy uh, Marr, is out there and he's doing this now. It's, he's huge. He's shy. Tommy. Yeah. Everybody oh, he's Tommy. huge. I'm huge. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> we, we're, we're all huge. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, sitting next to you is your lovely bride. Yeah, I, what? Uh, what? Oh, boy. <laughs> no, actually. If my husband's no, no, watching. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's your sister. It's my sister-in-law. And there's only one person standing there. Oh, it's my sister-in-law. I'm sorry. This is my sister-in-law, Janie. Who's my, who's Janie. My, Janie. 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 Yeah, Janie Robinson. That's right. That's her last name. That's her husband. That's and he's right. huger than the three of us. Yes. And what you just said could get me in trouble. <laughs> she's, my, she's my sister's wife. I mean, my sister's, my daughter's, sister's <laughs> my mother's sister's on, uncle on the, uncle on the fourth she's side. my, she's my Sis wife's sister. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yes, I, I am his sister-in-law, um, maybe ex-in-law after my husband sees that, but no, hopefully he's, well, no, just, hopefully he's taking care of the kids now. Just on me, everybody else does, it's okay. Starting rumors, this guy. <laughs> and to my right is my associate and very dear friend, Margaret Butler. Hello, Hi, Margaret, Dennis. and How welcome to the show. Guys. Thank it's you nice for having us. Janie's a she's a comedian, and Margaret works with the CIA. <laughs> so we can't really go into what, what her stuff. Yes. But they're both they're co-directors of, of uh, Special Needs Circle of Friends dot org. Special Needs Circle of Friends dot org, and it's a spe it, they work with special needs children on Long Island and the families and the parents, and uh, they'll tell you about it later. But that's why they're here together. Well, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. I really yeah. want to talk about Other that. Other than uh, Maggie's investigation of you. <laughs> <laughs> CIA. That's great. Yeah. But anyway, uh, that's awesome. I really do want to talk about that. And I wanted to be able to put, uh, give numbers and uh, phone numbers and where they can contact you and everything else. Uh, but we'll get into that in a little bit. And uh, now, you have been around. I sure have. I've been doing comedy for a long time. Started back in 1978. It was a Wednesday, Flag Day, <laughs> June 14th, and it was uh, it was pretty amazing. It was snowing, you know, June. Uh, it's just yeah, it was hot, June. nice. It, it was snowing. It was, yeah, yeah. I, I did a show, and I and I, I've been hooked ever since. Uh, you know, I was improving on stage. I didn't have an act, and it just kind of snowballed because I was a theater major in college. I went to Nassau Community College for theater. Originally, it was communications because I wanted to be where Janine was back in the booth. But uh, I got involved in the theater, and then I became a theater major, and I started doing theater, and I got sidetracked from there to, to comedy, and that's where I've been ever since. Do you remember your first stand-up, or first thing you ever did that was uh, The first thing I ever did? A paid gig. A paid gig? Yeah, how's that? Oh, that maybe. All right, forget about it. Let's go back to <coughs> oh, the first, what you did. The go first routine? First thing you ever did. The first thing I ever did was I had a white 
I had a white wig. It was white. It looked like a Q-tip. So I put it on my head and I stood very still and I said, a Q-tip. That was my first impression. <laughs> then I took, a, I took a, dirty, a dirty white hat. It was like kind of brownish. And I put that on and I said, a dirty Q-tip. So I did a Q-tip, a dirty Q-tip. And then I put sunglasses on the dirty Q-tip. And I said, a dirty Q-tip lying on the beach. Those are the first three jokes I ever wrote. I think could have been something else, but those are the ones that one I remember because that was the one that got the most reaction, not laughs, but a good reaction. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like right now. Yeah. Uh, and that was was that a paying gig or was that the no 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 first? The, the first paying gig I had was at that place. Uh, he started paying the comics. Uh, it was Richard M. Dixon's White House Inn. It was uh, on uh, Hicksville Road. It was sixteen hundred. Hicksville Road, which is 1600, just like Pennsylvania Avenue. But this guy was Richard M. Dixon, and he looked like Nixon. And the first paying gig I got was there, probably like two Wednesdays later, because it was Wednesday night, it was comedy night. I got $5. Wow. Yeah. And then, you know, I got another $5 the next week. And then I became the highest paying guy on the show, getting 15 Wow. This is back in the 70s. That was a lot of money back then. Yeah, well, you can see, you know, you can <laughs> really, see the, no, it was a lot of money in the 70s. I'm a starving musician back uh, I used to, I used to pump gas right down the block. And I, and I pumped gas. This is before they, you know, they didn't, America, they didn't always have, they did not always have self-service. You had to have people pump the gas for you. I would pump the gas. And it was 56 cents a gallon when Carter was president, and there were lines down the road. It had odd and even plate numbers. Remember that? Mm -hmm. I, I used to have to pump the gas. Mm -hmm. My dad would drive up to the front of the line because I was pumping the gas <laughs> in a loco jacket. And he didn't work for loco. <laughs> but he said, I'm with loco. Fill that up. And I said, Dad. He goes, shut up. <laughs> fill it up. I'm with loco. So I filled up the tank for him because he didn't want to stand in line. Well, I remember those days. When yeah. I was in day, sure. And you were a cop and you didn't catch him. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was too busy getting my own gas. We, had, we were exempt from that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we were exactly exempt, except when you tried to cut the line. So it was, it yeah. was a six and one, half a dozen. Yeah. There you go. But, yeah, I was, uh, I was a cop and, um, and uh, a musician and a singer and all kinds of good stuff like that. Nobody How many did, arrests did you make? I'm just, nobody, we never talk about you. How many arrests did you make do you think you made over the years? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds? <sighs> now that you're going to come looking for me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think uh, you ever arrested my dad? Did you ever arrest a guy pretending to be a local guy at a gas station? <laughs> I was thinking hey, about it. I was going to call the CIA, but she's sitting over there. So was... <laughs> my dad used to do the funniest things. That's pretty much, I got my, my, uh, my sense of humor from my dad. He used to do stuff that would crack me up. I tried out, here's a funny story. I tried out for the circus, Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bailey. And it was at, uh, m I was in the Madison Square Garden. And uh, I was walking through to find a place where I'm supposed to audition as a clown. I want to be a clown. And I'm walking past the elephants. I'm actually going through the elephants. And a guy from the Daily News is following me. And he's going, do you know where you're going? I said, I don't know. So we walk, we walk through, and then, and then they do a whole article about me in the Daily News. And I, told, I showed my dad the paper. I said, Dad, look, I was, I'm in the Daily News. I was auditioning to be a clown in the circus. And he goes, oh, yeah? I'm in that paper, too. I go, really, you in the paper? I was there as well, my son. And he took me, he says, look at 12, page 12. So I opened page 12, and it's about a guy who was there with a Volkswagen who was filling the back of his, the trunk, the front of the trunk of his Volkswagen with elephant manure. And it was my dad. There was a whole article about how he loved elephant manure, and it was the best stuff for his tomato plants. And he would come every year when the circus... <laughs> and my brother worked in the Midtown Tunnel. You're out there. I love and, it. No, seriously. My, my brother used to work in the Midtown Tunnel. And, you know, he, he was like one of those guys who goes inside the wall of the Midtown Tunnel. You oh, know, yeah. insulating guys. Oh, my dad, when the, when the circus, the elephants would walk to Manhattan, you know, through the tunnel. They closed the tunnel. You know, you're a cop. You had to stop traffic for that. <laughs> anyway, he, my, my, my dad would tell my, my brother, get the elephant poop after the elephants go, <laughs> before they open the lanes again. For his tomato plants. For his tomato plants. So that, my dad was very, uh, very instrumental. And that's, you know, that's where I get my comedy from. Well, Think about it. I mean, that's the weirdest kind of material. I have weird material. Well, that, you, and you know how to shovel it. <laughs> yeah, there yeah, you go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> I'd say what, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be back after Janine, a Janine, cut his mic. <laughs> joking. <laughs> well, what are you, joking? <laughs> we'll be back after these words. Don't go away.
We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Dow. We have a multidiscipline practice in Melville and Ronkonkoma, New York, and we treat patients with many, many different conditions, from newborns through geriatric patients with numerous different techniques. Uh, there's a technique and a, a type of treatment for every class of patient. We have them all here. Here's my son Thomas, also a doctor of chiropractic, working on one of our patients' cervical spine. This patient has had chronic neck pain for many, many, many years, has been to a multitude of different practitioners with little or no response. And with our specialized techniques, she has improved tremendously and continues to improve on a daily basis. Uh, we have two practices, one in Melville and one in Ronkonkoma, New York. We are a multidiscipline um, chiropractic office. Uh, what that means is we have chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, psychologists, um, all working as a team and a network of outside professionals such as orthopedists and neurologists uh, that we work hand in hand with to help determine what your injuries are and the best way to uh, treat your injuries. Um, I have the great pleasure of having my son in practice with me uh, we work hand in hand, father and son, to give our patients the best care possible um, and a staff which is loving, caring, um, and you'll never have to wait at all in our office for service. Many times patients come into our office and they have what's called a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries are like scars inside your body. If you've ever been cut on the outside of your body, you get a scar. The same thing happens inside of your body to your muscles and ligaments. So our job is to determine where those are, stretch the muscles, adjust the vertebra back into their correct position, and then refortify the normal structure with um, exercise. That's what we do best, and I hope someday you'll come see us at one of our two offices. Thank you. Back. 
What did I say? What did no, I, say? I said. I, He's I, telling jokes. You say, you? don't stand because uh, I'm going to hit my head on the ceiling of the studio. <laughs> so I said, I can't stand myself. But, and she laughed. Well, let me ask you something here. Now, you're not here alone, obviously. No. How many, who, who you got Other with than you? Janie and Maggie, I've brought a couple of my friends. Uh, I don't know if you know uh, Jiffy Jeff Jaworski. Do you know Jiffy Jeff? The boxer? Yeah, the professional fighter. He's here. He's right back here. Jiffy, come here. Come say hello to Dennis. Hey, Dennis, how's it going? <laughs> uh, how you doing, folks? Uh, my name is Jiffy Jeff Jaworski. I'm a professional fighter. I had six professional fights, of which I lost 11. It's good to be here with you, Dennis. Well, you, you, I, heard, here. I heard that you used to fight. You used to fight, right? I still do. That's good. I have you a know, girlfriend. Got, you, oh, you fight with your girlfriend? <laughs> you, don't, you don't hit her, though. You don't hit her. No, I No, because that, that, that'll cost you. That'll cost you uh, <laughs> time, a lot of time in the penitentiary. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you look like the guy, uh, who shoot that guy? Uh, what is his name? What is his name? What is his name? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What was your question? <laughs> I want to ask you, do you remember Mike, do you know Mike Tyson? Sure. I know Mike Tyson. I know Mike. And do you know that what he did once was he bit the ear, he bit the ear off of a Vandy Holyfeld. Remember that? Sure. He bit his ear off. And a lot of people don't know what was going on there. And I, 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 I'm like an investigative reporter. I ask him, I ask him, I say, hey, Mike, Mike, let me ask you a question. What were you thinking? What were you thinking when you bit Evander Holyfeld's ear off? You know what he said to me? What? He said, tastes like chicken. <laughs> That's what he told me. Hey, if anybody's going to taste like chicken, it's going to be Mike. Mike Tyson. That's the chicken Tyson chicken. You know, hear Tyson chicken? If you go shopping, you know all about it. Yeah. It's a good thing his name is in Purdue. Because <laughs> then everybody would know he's a bigger chicken than anybody. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, hey, you know, it's, it's fun. Fighting is fun. Sometimes you get uh, promoters and managers, and it gets a little ugly because they want you to, you know, they want, like one time, one t hey, Dennis, 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 Dennis. <laughs> Listen, one time I'm in the, I was in a fight with this guy, and the promoter comes up to me and says, Listen to me, Jeff, Jiffy, Jeff, Jeff. What? <laughs> Somebody call? No, Jiffy, they, the guy says to me, he says, Jiffy, I want you to take a dive in the fifth round. That's what he told me, Dennis. He tells me, take a dive in the fifth round. Are you going to do it? I said, there's no way. He said, why? I said, I never made it to the fifth round ever. <laughs> Second round, maybe I could <laughs> try to get there, but uh, yeah. $5 a shot, I get paid. They pay good money when you get hit. You're your sparring partner, spar. You you have a spar? Yeah, I go to spar, that bar, whatever bar's open, I'll go there. <laughs> what? <coughs> you have a spar partner? I, I, you get paid $5. Every time the guy will hit you, you get $5. I get, if you get hit 10 <laughs> times, what is that? $35, somewhere around there. You got to figure taxes. We're in New York. Hey. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, so that's it. You go, hey, if you want to come down to my gym, Dennis, if you come down to my gym, folks out there, I have Jiffy Jeff's gym. I'm going to open the gym. The phone number is 555-1212. That's for information. The number again, 724-8K apostrophe at AOL.com. <laughs> <laughs> Jiffy was here. Jiffy. Wow. Oh, so no did that work? It was great. Oh, I was so going to ask, I was so gonna tempted. I wanted to ask you, did you fight Muhammad Ali or something? No, like Muhammad, no. No, I just. No. Look at, look at this. Is that amazing? Look at my hair. <laughs> Hello there. I was born with a clown wig. That's why I want to be a clown. Because all the other clowns got to pay like $600 for one of these babies. I got mine for free. Now, do you have anybody else in that? Uh, yeah, let me just here? fix my hair. Would you like to meet my accountant? <laughs> Here's my accountant. How do you do? I'm Bob's accountant. I do a comb over. Anyway, yeah, let's see who else is here. Oh, you know who's here? My grandpa's here. My grandpa. Grandpa, come say hello. Come say hello to Dennis. <laughs> see, I'm hiding back here. Here, it's grandpa, here. Hello, Dennis. <laughs> what can I do for you? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Are you one of these guys who gets up every single day and starts up his blower to blow leaves? Do you do it, Dennis? <laughs> Because I don't like those guys. Every day they get up in the morning and they blow leaves. And they go to sleep. And the wind blows it back on his lawn. And he gets up and says, how did that happen? 
And you know what else happens? The leaves fall out of the trees onto the lawn. Why don't they wait until all the leaves are off the trees and the wind stops, then do it? That's all I want to know. Why don't they do that, Dennis? Hey, are you married? No. No? I'm married. I've been married to the same woman not the, for 57 oh. years. <laughs> oh, not, not her. No. <laughs> Here's my grand, great granddaughter. <laughs> she, um, I, I was married to the same woman for 57 years. You know how you do it, right? No. You don't <laughs> die. That's how you do it, Dennis. Stay alive. <laughs> That's how you do it. Yeah, so, anyway, <laughs> what else is going on in life? <laughs> can you actually, can you actually? I can't see a thing. <laughs> Just like, can you actually see with me? No, that? I can't. This is one of the hazards of being a comedian. Uh, Don't get up and walk when you have these glasses on during a comedy show because comics can't afford health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> That's Grandpa. That's a headache and a half coming yeah, to the I was with my wife the other day, 57 years, Dennis. She looks at me and she says to me, she says, Henry, I'm not happy. I said, well, let's go buy a chicken or something and you can cook it. <laughs> she says, no, no, I'm not happy. I said, well, let's go uh, to the park and take a walk. She says, no, that's not it. She says, Henry, I, w I want a divorce. And I said, okay, Gladys, I wasn't looking to spend that much. That <laughs> 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 was grandpa. Uh, that was, De Dennis, that was my grandpa. I'm Epi Epperman, and my grandpa, he's a little crazy. <laughs> Do you know that um, I, I, I'm trying to help the Audubon Society? The Audubon Society has a problem. They're trying to figure out why the geese don't fly in the perfect V formation. I don't know if you know that, but years ago, the geese used to fly in the perfect V formation, but they don't anymore. Now it's like a check mark. Do you ever see it? Have you ever seen a V formation lately? Yes. You have? No, no I haven't. No, you no. haven't. <laughs> you see, the check, it's like a check mark, always a check mark, never a V4. And the Audubon Society is very concerned about the geese. Why are they doing that? Why are they not flying in a V? Why are they flying in a check mark? Why is it that they're in a check mark and not a V? And I figured it out because uh, I'm a theoretical physicist at times. And I figured it out. The reason why the geese are not flying in a V and they're flying in a, in a check mark is because there's more geese on one side than on the other. <laughs> I figured that out all for myself. Yeah. But apparently, they're not thrilled with me and what I said. I thought that they would understand, but obviously they don't. You have to look at life in different ways. There's the only way you're going you're gonna, to uh, figure out something is to, to look at it at every angle. If I see something on the ground, I'm going to look at every angle. Now they just look at it from here. I'm going to go over there and look at it. Go over there and look at it, and go over there and look at it. Then I'll be positive what it is. <laughs> Especially if I don't know what it is. Just saying. This is this is great. I just, just sit here. I don't have to say a word. They just you just go, wind you up, hit the key. There all, you my go. all my characters, as you can see, are a freight train of thought, a runaway freight train of thought. I can't stay focused on stuff. I can't, so. It was hard for me to focus with those glasses. I yeah, mean, each one I know, right? I got all the different, because I want to look different. Yeah, well, you do. Yeah, here's, here's a character without glasses. Oh, we got time? Yeah. Got time, right? Okay. Yeah, this is a guy. This is Will B. Stuckinson. This oh, is my, this my chicken farmer from Shreveport, Louisiana. Hey there, Dennis. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I'll tell you what. It's nice being up here in New York. I like it. It's <laughs> fun. People drive like nuts, though. I know if you got down where I'm from, we got one lane going in one direction. Up here, you got three lanes going the same direction. That's brilliant. <laughs> I'd never thought of that. I'm going to tell them back home when I get home that you can put three. This way you can get around the hay truck. Get around. You can get around the log truck. You can get around the guy in front of you who's cooking meth in the station way. Get around them. You know what I'm talking about? I'll tell you what. I raise chickens. Dennis? I raise chickens. I have chickens on my farm because I'm a chicken farmer. A lot of people wonder. There's a lot of questions out there in life. 
They wonder what, what come first, the chicken or the egg? You ever hear that one? They want to know what's come first. The well, I'll tell you right now, it was the chicken. The chicken come first because I ain't never seen no egg lay no chicken. <laughs> the chicken lay the egg. The egg don't lay the chicken. <laughs> People say, well, maybe the egg was there first. I say, well, who sat on that egg for 21 days <laughs> to hatch it? You see, the chicken got to be there for the egg to come to become a chicken. First of all, it's kind of a stupid <laughs> question also. What come first, the chicken or the egg? Don't work like that. It don't go chicken, egg, chicken, egg. You need two chickens to make an egg that's going to give you another chicken. You need a rooster and a hen to give you an egg that's going to give you another chicken. <laughs> that's how God made it. <laughs> My son, he's a chicken farmer, eight-year-old boy. He loves his chickens. He takes good care of them. He thinks the egg come first. Dennis, you know what he said to me? He said, I think, Daddy, that the egg come first. I said, son, why you think the egg come first? He said, well, for breakfast I have eggs, and for lunch I have chicken. <laughs> breakfast come before lunch, so the egg come before the chicken. That's what he told me. It works. That's brilliant. That's a good boy. He's a smart boy. That's my son. Hey, people at home, pray for my boy. Pray for my son. He, uh, he got a magnifying glass last Christmas, and he looked at the sun with it. He burned a hole clear through his head. <laughs> he can't hardly ride a bicycle without a loud whistle coming through that skull of his. But you know, God is good. God is so good because now when he rides the bicycle and the whistle gets to whistling, he don't hit no deer no more. <laughs> That's a blessing from the Lord, I tell you right now. <laughs> I tell you what, while you got that going. Is that camera on when I look at it or I'm just talking to nobody? Okay, good. <laughs> while you got that on, keep it on. Oh, keep it on? Keep it on. Take it to commercial. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we just love having you here for the Dennis Insight, Dennis Insight Show. It's the Insight Show. <laughs> <laughs> we give you a lot of insight here. And what we want you to do is sit right down, sit down tight, go get yourself a drink from the refrigerator if you like, go to the bathroom, because we're going to be right back. Don't be changing no channel. Don't make me come over there and take that channel change out your hand. You go do what you got to do. Or you could watch these messages, which I think are very important for your life. So sit down, watch the commercial, and we'll see you a little bit. God bless y'all. Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we 15 years. We do a vast years. array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching to help her with her pain. Vicki is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicki is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000 or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com.
Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're having a great time. I'm having a ball here. I don't have to get to say too much. You just let him run. He's amazing. He's amazing. Uh, speaking of which, he's going to be performing on the 19th, December 19th. That's tomorrow. Uh, he's going to be at the uh, Clarion Hotel in Ronkonkoma. Uh, the Gateway uh, to Comedy uh, show is uh, it's a Mike Dillon thing. So if you call over there, the phone number is 631-790-4046. And uh, tell him you heard it here. And go down and see this man. He's crazy. It's wonderful. <laughs> also, there's going to be another show on the 20th with another comedian. Uh, one of the funny men, uh, Gary Kessner, is going to be there. But tomorrow night, be there first at the Clarion in Ronkonkoma. Uh, we're going to take a short little uh, clip to see uh, of one of, my favorite, uh, uh, one of my favorite skits. But go ahead. Let's see them. Here we go. Years ago, they used to let the college all-stars come out and tell you, you know, introduce themselves before the game started. They would come out and tell you, you know, run onto the field, tell you who they were, what team they played for, and what position. They don't let them do that anymore. I'd like to show you why. And now, let's meet the players of the college football all-star game. <laughs> Billy Bob Rubick, University of Texas, right guard. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> Robert W. Wilson, Harvard University. Quarterback. Hi, Muffy. <laughs> yeah. Number 72. Oh, shoot, no. 27. This ain't my jersey. This is a new jersey. Oh, God. What? <laughs> I, I passed it the microphone. Effie Epperman, Cleveland University. That's it. <laughs> Shiroda, Ito, Mitsubishi, Moto, Toyota, Shoot! Banzai! Oh, what a feeling! Two points! Okay, come back Thursday, shirt to be ready. <laughs> hey, what do you, yeah, what do you call it? Um, Tony Cappuccino? How are you doing? Brooklyn University, and uh, I'm not playing today. I have an injury. <laughs> I have something stuck in my eye over here. <laughs> hey, get it? It's a joke. <laughs> Pepe the Weppy, I kicked him off. Bruce Kaskiaski. 
San Francisco University. Tight end. Next year, I hope to be a wide receiver. I might have been transferred to the Army. Who knows? Don't ask, don't tell. Yeah! Right. Um, quasi white shoes moto. Notre Dame. Halfback. Thank you very much. Good day. Thank you, the College All Stars. The College All Thank you so much. Thank you. Funny, funny man. Uh, we also now, uh, I, I said it was his wife before, and uh, I was wrong, obviously, but uh, we do have uh, uh, Jane Nee Robinson here with us, and you're commuting uh, yourself, right? Oh, well, I guess, uh, yeah, I have had the pleasure of doing some comedy and uh, tossing it around a bit. I wouldn't say I'm on the circuit, but... But she'll be there. She's going to do some time tomorrow I will. Night. Oh, I will good. do a few minutes, and... Uh, I feel like every day in my life I'm a little bit of a comedian. <laughs> yeah, have, have, did you go to school for it as well, like uh, like stand up U University or stuff like this, or uh, you just happen to have it in you? No, actually, um, I met somebody who thought that uh, I should get up on stage, and I ended up doing a with a, a group with Bob called the Laughter Company and oh. back in the '80s at the uh, East Side Comedy Club. Yeah, it was an improv group, the Long Island Laughter Company, Lilco. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got in trouble; we got shut down because we were using their tag or something. Yeah. But yeah, it was yeah. Long Island Laughter Company. It was it was Janie and and um, Vinnie Mark, Vinnie Mark and Dave Hawthorne, and Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Who really likes Janie? Yeah. Well, she. Wow. A little too yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry to we, hear were that. <laughs> we were friends. We were friends. So yeah. Sorry. So so uh, you know. That's the late reaction right there. So I'm sorry, but. Uh, I just envisioned that. And it was just, just First my <laughs> husband, now the past. Oh, what is next? And I didn't bring this one up, okay? This was not on me. Anyhow. Uh, now you're doing something. Uh, I'm doing something away bigger. Away from the funny side, now you're doing something really super. Bigger, greater, dear to my heart. Um, my associate, Margaret Butler, and I, uh, we're parents of special needs children. I have a son who's uh, 17. And at the age of three, he was diagnosed with uh, autism, and he wasn't speaking, which I think was the most difficult part. So um, Maggie and I both have children with special needs. She has I have a son, Tyler, uh, who's also 17 and has Down syndrome. And uh, he's just a little comedian himself, actually. He is actually very funny. He's a great kid. Great kid. And our boys uh, had the pleasure of going to school together. And as parents, we... Um, we realize that socialization and opportunities for them to just have friends and um, activities were very minimized. They didn't really have friends and there wasn't much for them to do. So as parents, we created a organization, a non-for-profit, uh, 5013C. Nobody gets a salary and we, we actually pound the pavement to fundraise and we create socializations and activities for children of special needs of all ages. So we um, actually, And all disabilities. Yes. So we don't strictly have just autism or um, Down syndrome. Everybody, cerebral palsy is invited. All of our children, they're all God's children. Right. They all belong together to be happy. Yeah. And, and here's an example, just real quick. Uh, uh, on Monday, December 22nd, they're all going bowling. It's like a Christmas party bowling thing. Right. That's right. And Santa right. Claus is going to be there. Yes. Cool. And yeah. you know who Santa Claus is going to be? <laughs> Me. <laughs> I'm going to be Santa Claus. Leave the teeth home. <laughs> I will. But go ahead. So, so if you Which, go to the website, yeah. specialnewscirclerfriends.org, yeah, like and you'll see that there's all kinds of activities these kids can, everybody's invited. So, right, so besides the, the website yourself, which you just said, say it one more time. Right. The website. Specialneedscircleoffriends.org. 
Okay, and is there a phone number or anything like that you want to give out? Or, or? There is a phone number, uh, 631, I'll give the 208, 60, we'll give 6044, which is my, uh, my number. And there's... Mine is 631-379-6006. So they can contact, they can contact you and contact make us. up arrangements right. to bring their children? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, to, absolutely. Uh, things like this bowling well, actually, sounds wonderful. Or even if they have any questions or concerns, you know, families with children with all disabilities have many, many concerns. And there's a lot of information out there that parents aren't aware of. Right. And that's part of what we do. do. We try and educate and let families know what is out there for them because there's a ton of stuff out there. Absolutely. The state can help you we, with stuff. Like, yeah, you know. a lot of parents don't. You know, it took Maggie and I uh, many years to uh, plug along and figure out where the opportunities of funding was through uh, the state of New York. What we also do with our time is we operate out of a Selden and Reach Youth Association, and um, we run a support group once a month. And it's a free support group. We give our time. We have speakers come in from OPWDD, which is where all the funding comes for opportunities for people with developmental disabilities. And we help facilitate the parents in the right direction. You know, that is something that took us ourselves many, many, many years, years to many, figure many out. Years. What we don't want is we don't want a parent of a special needs thinking they don't know where to turn next and there's nothing there for their children. So we're there for the parent and we create the programs for the children. So the bowling alley that we'll be doing on Monday, that is actually funds that Margaret and myself has raised all year long. And we have two swim parties over at the Holiday Inn Express on 347. Mr. Tunis is a very nice gentleman. He gives us the opportunity to bring our children in and have pool parties and pizza parties. And we do this at no expense to the parent. This is what we do. So um, the children love it. They, they end up leaving going, Mrs. Robinson, Mrs. Butler, I had the best time of my life, you know, and it's a simple Friday night at the youth center where we're playing board games or doing karaoke or talent shows from there to maybe a swim party or um, air trampoline, wherever we have the opportunity to bring our children. Uh, we're also shutting down the movies theater. Yes, we have a movie theater Tell them the following week. Is that a core movie land is actually shutting the movie theater for us or opening earlier and uh, they're giving us a private showing of National Museum 3. Wow. So all the children will be able to go that. It's, the community is really coming together for us. And that's, it's an incredible outreach because they're reaching out to people <clears throat> who pretty much stay in their home and say we can't go there you know, because it's too much of a commotion at the bowling alley with all the other kids and you know, the, all, you know, the young teenagers now making fun of them or whatever. I mean, I don't know if they do that, but... It does happen. It does happen. No, it does you know what I'm saying? So, so what they do is they make these special things, and the whole idea is to raise money for this and do bigger and bigger things, you know, every, you know, all I know the time. somebody that has children that With have... With special uh, needs. You know how you pronounce it? Burgers? Uh, Asperger's, Asperger's, which is a, a very difficult... And uh, uh, they're growing. You know, they're yeah. teenagers. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking about giving her your number. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, when, when Maggie and I put our heads together, I, I knew in my heart of hearts there are children sitting on couches on a Friday night, whether they're 17 or 16. And I think it gets more obvious as the child gets older because when they're 8 and they're 7, they're kind of like tired when they're coming home from school. But with special needs children, as they grow older, we put our heads together and I said, I know there's children out there they're 16, they want to socialize. They have the same, you know, wants as neurotypical children. Exactly, just as we did when we were 16 and 17. What'd you do? You went to your friend's house, you hung out, you sang, you danced. These children want the same thing, and they don't want mom and dad there. So they're in a safe place with us. The parents can trust us. We're all background checked. Right. We, all of our, most of our volunteers have children with special needs. So... We have a special educator it's, it's a, on board. It's a, it's a safe haven for these children exactly. and young adults that their parents can leave them and know it's okay. There's actually a karaoke for a friend of mine, uh, Russell, who has a, he's been there 22 years at King Yum in, in Queens, this Chinese restaurant. And these kids will sing there, and have, they have a great time doing that. Maybe be something that might interest you. That's absolutely. beautiful. We did a karaoke fundraiser with the children, and they absolutely loved yes, it. To have, right. we, we, to have them 
have the opportunity to be on stage with the microphone and the validation that they felt up there when people applauded. I've actually had the one here. I had That's a karaoke beautiful. host on here, and we had a contest and all of that, and we raised some money. You know, hopefully what we're about in the, at the end of the day is changing lives and changing lives to children that, that need somebody to go to bat for them, you know. And it really is a very rewarding, you know, like I said, nobody gets a salary, but the reward is absolutely worth it to the see them. The smiles on their faces is all we need. Yeah. And donations. <laughs> yeah, that's Anything. always yeah, helpful. Yeah. Well, donations always help. $5, $10, yeah. somebody's got $100. Yeah, sometimes we it's even me, we collect else. baskets <laughs> and we do fundraisers with their baskets and we put the baskets together. We get help from the Girl Scouts, help us. So, yeah. and, don't and, and also, by the way, tomorrow night we're going to try to raise money. <coughs> we might have some things that you can bid on or whatever. I don't know how you do that. Stuff. And yeah. if there's anything you missed on this as far as phone numbers and email addresses and stuff, just back up. Go back, play it over a few more times till you get it. You might want to slow it down. I'm a fast talker. <laughs> well, it's as fast as they can slow as fast as they yeah, want to. Yeah, so they could do it. They're all New Yorkers. Yeah. They're, they're, they're with you. Honestly, you know, we, we are all over the country. Oh, really? really? Whenever you have a computer, no matter if it's in the world. Yeah, it's wide world, uh, wide web world. Wide wow. world web. Web feet, I don't know. <laughs> wide world where, web where, feet. <laughs> wherever it is on a computer, they can see the show. Wow, I have, we have beautiful. people in, in Japan and uh, the... When I first started doing this, I first heard there was like, I don't know, eight or ten people watching from Japan or something. I was saying, what do they got? Somebody with the, putting the words up for them or something? And then I found out it was soldiers. Wow. Oh, Imagine wow. that. Yeah. What, a, what an that. honor that was when I heard that. Wow, that's great. That's fabulous. Yeah. Well, we're, we've come to the end, and I want to thank you guys so much for coming. I hope you come back again sometime. Thank um, you. I get to do the last song of the show, which I do every, on every show. So, um, <laughs> if my band is ready, I'm going to shut, I'm going to turn my microphone on now. <laughs> can, I, can I stand up or is that, uh, is that a problem? Good. There we go, right down here. There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much for being part of the show tonight. We really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, yes. It's going to be at the store. Okay, here we go. God bless America. Why would fools God bless America, my home, sweet home? Ladies and gentlemen, let's give our prophets to our first responders, to our police departments and fire departments, to our soldiers who are out there defending our freedom. To the veterans who've been there and done that, I give you the greatest country in the world. So now with me here at home. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America.
Good night, everybody. God bless. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs>